So hello and welcome to Knows Knows. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to replace this chrome grill surround. And we're going to be swapping it out for a black or a Skoda labels it as a black pearl uh, grill surround. So the car I'm doing it on is a late 2019 Skoda Kodiak. So that's before the facelift model. And I'm using the official Volkswagen Group or Skoda uh, part. Uh, so I got this obviously direct from Skoda, but as we all know, they are Volkswagen now. So we'll just open this box and let you have a look at the actual uh, black grill surround. And you can see uh, the different mounting methods that are used uh, when clipping this back on. So the different clips that we're going to be trying to remove, so you can see them there. Uh, and I will go into detail as I uh, get the old chrome one off. But you can see there is multiple clips around the surround um, on the underside, on both sides of the plastic um, so I'm doing this in, I think it's about two degrees, uh, when I did this job. Um, so I was being a bit cautious and I did snap a couple of clips, which I will explain when I get into it, uh, on the outer edges when I was taking it off. So like I said, there is a facelift model for the Skoda Kodiak. So it's always worth, um, once you've got the part, just offering it up to the grill like so, and just making sure that it matches. I'm not sure if there's any difference in the actual grill surround, but it's always worth checking that, making sure you've got the right part for your car. So we need to get underneath the bonnet or the hood if you are in America. Uh, so we need to just pop the bonnet or the hood uh, so we can gain access to the underside. Now there is a scuttle panel that runs along the front edge which connects the front grille to the radiator and gives it sort of some strength and stability. And there is six screws that hold this in place. And this is using the Torx T25H which go along the top here. So one, two, three, four five and then six uh, we need to remove them and we also need to remove the bonnet or hood catch which is directly in the middle there so i'm going to start the job by taking the six screws out and i've got a longish series uh torx bit holder it's about 200 mil in length and that will become apparent why you'll need that a bit later on just putting a bit of blue tack in the end of it just to keep the um torx bit in my holder and i'm just going to unscrew the six screws that we just indicated earlier once we've got these six screws out, I'm just going to prise, just pull it forward gently uh, and just unhook the front flap from underneath the radiator retaining plate like so. So that leaves it free to move around. And then before we can get busy removing that top scuttle panel, we just need to remove the bonnet or hood lever, which is in the center here. And to do that, we just need a flat edge screwdriver, just pop it into the little ridge there and then just uh, lever it forward and then it releases a little spring clip that retains the lever in position so there's only one clip holding it um, and once you've got the clip off obviously put it somewhere safe and you can pull the handle off it doesn't really matter because there is two larger splines so you can't get it in the wrong position is what i'm trying to get at there so you see the two larger splines so when you pop it on it can only go back in in sort of that position so don't worry about um keeping it or marking it and you can see the larger splines there it can just come off uh, and obviously put it somewhere safe until we need to rebuild it in a bit. So the next job is to remove the five screws, which I did try and record with the camera, but it didn't show up at all because it's just pitch black in there. Uh, there is five screws, and I will indicate once I get the scuttle panel out uh, and face it towards the camera, I'll show you where these five screws sit. Uh, once you've got the torch in there, you can actually get um, a look, and you can see the uh, there is two on the left-hand side, one in the centre, and then two on the right-hand side. Uh, and like I say, once you sort of pull it up slightly to have a look, and you can see I'm sort of just moving it enough just so I'm not breaking the plastic, but enough to get my long series uh, T25 in there. And that's the reason why I said it needs to be a longish series. You see, I've got, I think mine's about 150 to the edge of the red handle. Um, so you need at least a 200 mil, I would say, to get you access from the uh, sort of the engine side through to the front. And I'm just unscrewing the other two now on the other side. So I've done the two on the left, I'm doing the two on the right. And there is one in the center. So the key point in this as well is make sure uh, it's magnetized your T25 so you don't drop the screws because you don't want to be fishing around for a screw or put a bit of blue tack on the end and keep them, the screws somewhere safe. So make sure they're free. And then we've got the one in the center that needs to come off. So again, in with my long series Torx bit making sure we don't lose that screw. So what I do here is I actually unscrew the center clip and then I keep the pressure on the Torx driver when I uh, pull it sort of towards the scuttle panel towards the engine bay. Um, and that keeps the screw in position. You'll see what I do, I sort of keep it in one hand so the screw's being left pushed in the hole. 
and I will show you the five screws or screw holes where they were fastened to the front grille. So that's the center one, obviously. And then you've got two on this side here, center one, and then you've got your other two on the other side. So five screws in total holding the scuttle panel to the front black grille. So take the screw out, put that somewhere safe. And just before we carry on, it's worth just me freezing the frame here and showing you uh, how this attaches. So I'll just freeze it here and the um, red squares that I'm indicating there are elongated slots which slot into tabs on the front of the grill. And the yellow ones or arrows are obviously the screws. I'm uh, saying that so you don't pull it straight up. Um, basically when we're refitting this, we need to hold it sort of towards the engine bay and then push it uh, away from the car into them tabs. Uh, and likewise, when we're taking it off, we don't want to pull it straight up. There's the two center tabs that uh, need slotting in when we're rebuilding the uh, car back up once we've got the grill on. Anyway, so now we've got access to the um, the chrome grill on the top side, anyway, at least. And you can see the tabs there that we're going to be working on to try and get these tabs off. So I've got several multiple different prize tools, but the green uh, boxes that I've indicated there are the tabs on the uh, inside edge of the chrome grill. And I'm just moving them with a the screwdriver. And I'm also working on the top edge with a prize tool and just prizing the top ones off as well. And what I found um, when I started this job, or once I started popping these off, I noticed that they were trying to spring back into position because the green ones were still attached. So I can't again show you because the camera's not on that side. Uh, but if you could see on the other side, you would see that I pushed down on them green ones to push the tabs, whereas I'm lifting the top ones up with my prize tool, you can see there. So I'm sort of lifting them and then um, making sure they're unclipped from the black. And what I ended up doing was putting some like the little, um, well, like mobile phone repair or guitar picks in under the tabs, just so it kept them lifted. Uh, so then I could work on the green ones, which I've just shown you, uh, or I say work on it. It's just a case of just popping it in and just pushing it off. So the next two clips to tackle are the ones that are on the left and the right hand center. And they sit about uh, at the middle of the surround, as I'm indicating with them red boxes there. And the trick is with them is to put your screwdriver in. Again, obviously you can't see it because the camera would have to be on the other side. But you put your uh, screwdriver or lever on the underside of the clip and then pull it up away from the floor. Um, and then whilst doing that, pull the surround towards you. So this one here, try and get with my fingers first, um, but it won't come. So I end up obviously putting the screwdriver back in and then just lifting the clip up slightly so I can see that it's clearing the hole and then pulling the silver chrome towards myself and it just pull, releases that from the uh, slot that it's in like so. So once you've got these off, uh, obviously the, the top is now loose but now it's a case of working on the bottom. So I put my prize tool in the slot here. Now these two are the two clips that I snapped and broke. There's two that sit at 45 degrees. So there I think I've got it. Um, and then I put a red prize tool in the slot they can just see appearing just to keep that in that position so I don't clip back in. And if I just get the camera, I'll just show you these two small slots on that 45 degree angle that you can put a tool into in theory, pop this clip off. Now obviously I didn't know what I was um, trying to push it in up against when I was doing it. Uh, so it was all just going off at feel. So you can see there it goes in and pops. So I'm not actually pushing against the bodywork here. I'm just literally pushing it in the hole and trying to push that silver clip off. And like I say, I did uh, snap these in the end anyway. Uh, now it didn't really matter to me because I wasn't putting the chrome back on. It was just going to get replaced. But if you wanted to put it back on later date, it's worth making and spending a bit more time than I did on these two uh, clips that are on the 45 degree angles. So again, I'm doing the same here. I put a cloth on this one here because this one put up a bit more of a fight than the other one. Uh, but like I said, in the end of it, when I did pull them off, I'd snapped them anyway. So um, I think the uh, moral of the story is there. Just be a bit more patient than I was with these two at the 45 degree angles. Uh, so you don't snap them if you do want to reuse your chrome grill. So I'd released that one on the right. And then what I did then was offered the, um, the new black grill up. And I just marked up where the other tabs were that I needed to work on. So I've got two in the center here. got one there, one on the left. And then the green ones are the ones that are on the underside. So again, I just marked all the green ones up. Just lifted it off there just to see where I was. Put another one back on. Make sure I got the marks on. And then one on the right there as well. So I've got the four green and then the two center red ones. Obviously, I've already got the two off on the far left and far right. So I'm just making sure that wedge is in so it keeps it off. 
And what I also had was a couple of um, steel sort of engineering six inch rulers that I found quite handy to get some of these tabs off. So you can see some of the internal tabs and the really hard ones or tricky ones to get at is these blind ones on the underside. So again, I'm just putting my prize tool in just to keep that uh, lifted and make sure it doesn't click back in. Keep losing them, keep having to pop them back in. So these are the six inch rulers I was talking about. So these are fin rulers. Now the left hand side I've managed to free off already and it's just right hand side again causing me problems because uh, I couldn't get these tabs off initially and you can see me trying to work different things in uh, to, get the, to get to the areas I needed to do. Um, so yeah, I was just working away, making sure that one was off because that kept seemed to clip back in. Like I said, that was the one I snapped anyway. And then these these in the middle here that I'm just trying to release. So I've got the six inch rulers in the areas where the uh, tabs are. And all you're trying to do here is just trying to um, push the black tab lower than the actual, in this case, the, the chrome um, sort of U-shaped clip. So that's all you're trying to do. As soon as you get it past that black, uh, a bit lower than it, then you can just wiggle it out and it will come out. So a bit of patience needed here. Um, I've seen some other videos where people have used credit cards and stuff, but mine was tight in. So I've got another one off here. And the last one that was putting up a fight, I ended up with a sort of a boroscope camera. That's what that is. Uh, just so I could see the clip on the inside. Uh, once I managed to get a view on it, I could then unclick it and it came off quite easy. But this last clip, the one that's at 45 degrees, I end up um, obviously wiggling it and playing around with it and just trying all the different prize tools in it to try and get it out. Um, and obviously, like all these things, like I say, once you actually get it off, you can see how it actually attaches. But I end up wiggling it and it snaps this one on the right as well. So again, a bit more patience and a bit more, obviously, now hopefully with this video, you can see how they actually clip in, a bit more understanding how they clip in. Because um, you can... It's really hard to get from the backside as well, but like I say, you can see me wiggling it. I think I've freed it here, and all that happens is I pull gently on it. I'm not really pulling hard there. I pull gently, and it snaps the clip, uh, and I end up with uh, half the clip in the black surround, which I have to get with the long nose pliers, which I'm just fishing out now. So once I've got this fished out, I will just show it to the camera, and I will show it at the end as well when I've got before I clip the uh, black surround on, uh, but. Uh, I didn't want this rattling around. I'd already got the left-hand side one out, so it was a case of just being a bit careful, a bit patient, just fish this back out uh, from the slot. And once I get this out, I'll then put the camera up and I'll show you what I mean, because it's obviously easier to understand if you can see what's holding it in position. And I think I probably just wasn't being um, aggressive enough with my uh, prize tool. So what I should have done was push my prize tool a bit more or try to lift it up sort of towards the engine as it would be and it would have gone. So you can see the clip that I was working with. That's the one slot there. And I'll put my six inch rule in it and show you what I mean. So that was just holding that single clip and it must have just been hooked around the back of it and that's the reason why I snapped these two, one on the left and one on the right. In theory, by pushing the ruler in like so, it should have released it. I think the other tool that I had, I could have put that in and sort of prized it up and it would have lifted it more and then it would have slotted out. So anyway, you live and learn and hopefully this video will help you get your two out in one piece. And this is the grill once it's out. And you see all the tabs are in place. Uh, all the ones all come off nicely, apart from the two outer edges here, which I have in my hand there. The two clips have been retrieved, so they're not rattling around in the engine bay. So one there and one there are snapped. But I think you can do it without. If I was doing it again, I think I'm almost confident that I won't snap them. So this is the black one that's replacing it. Obviously, we've already seen this, and this does now needs putting on. I have cleaned it down before I clip it back on. So I'm just offering it up. And like I said, it is a cold day today. It is, I think, about two degrees. It's nearly zero. Uh, so I'm obviously being a bit cautious. The engine is warm, so it, there is some heat on the plastic, but there isn't on this new grill I'm putting on that's been in the cold. So I'm just clipping it on. Make sure that I'm getting the old firm click as it goes in. And you can see it flexing at the top. So you should be a bit careful. You don't put too much pressure on because until you get that top scuttle back, uh, panel back on, which gives its rigidity, you've got to sort of hold your hand around it like I'm doing there and just pushing as I go along, making sure all clips are in and it is firm and not going anywhere because you don't want it rattling off while you're going down the road. So again, work your way along the top, make sure all these top clips are on. And once you're comfortable they're all in, then we can sort of reverse the process. So you see I'm pushing and pulling down on the tab there, make sure the two at the 45 are on. Make sure it's all flush and fitted on, nice. 
Once you're happy that you've got it all clipped on, we can then get to the next stage of rebuilding the car. Obviously give it a wipe down once you've got it in this position. And we now need to get the scuttle panel on. So again, if you remember me talking about these two elongated slots, especially these in the middle, because that's the first one that usually goes in, you need to slot that into the two slots. So you see I'm, I'm sort of up towards the engine bay and then pushing into the two uh, prongs that are on the grill and I'm pushing the scuttle panel in while holding the screwdriver in. Uh, you can see the screw just the front of the middle one as you're going for it. So once you get it so far, don't go all the way with it. You need to make sure that lip sits on the top of the black grill. So again, two sort of old credit cards or prize tools or whatever you've got handy. So thin bits of card, push them in. So I'm just doing that so it rides over the top of the grill while I finish putting the center screw in. Once you've got that screw in, if you remember there was five along here. So again, make sure you don't lose your T25 if it's a separate bit. If it's a single piece, then just pull it straight out. I'm just being cautious because mine is in a holder. And once I've got it out, I can then work on the other four that are left to go in. And again, this is a case of just working your way along, being gentle with it, lift it up slightly so you can just get a view, get your screw in. Make sure you don't drop screws. That's obviously the other thing. You don't want to rattle around the engine bay again. So I'm just lifting it up so I can see it. That one just proved a bit more tricky. But then, once, again, once you get the hang of it, you straighten the hole and get it nipped up. So I'm nipping this other one up here as well. So there's two on this side, two on the other side, and one in the centre. Once they're all in and you're happy that you have secured them, you can then tuck the scuttle panel back under the lip on the radiator. So doing the right hand side one first, then the left, you see it just flexing slightly as I just do that. Again, just being gentle with it. Make sure it's all lined up. I'll obviously give it a wipe as well. That's why it all looks nice and shiny. A bit of um, black trim plastic restorer. And then in with the six screws. So I'm just putting these in sort of halfway, not fully in when I first start. Uh, make sure they're all lined up. So you see, I'm just doing them all loosely first, making sure that they're, um, they're all in the right position. And once I'm happy with that, I can just go along and nip them all back up. So again, just being cautious, make sure I've got everything, uh, make sure I don't drop them, sorry, into the engine bay. Then go back, nip them all up, like so. Once we've got these six screws back in on the scuttle panel, we can then work uh, just clip the uh, bonnet or hood latch into position I'm just going back over to make sure they're all tight not over tight but make sure they're nipped up obviously we don't want them rattling off on with the bonnet and if you remember I was talking about you need the clip and obviously the splines just line up these two larger splines which are opposite each other just line up on your splines there so that should just pop on once you get in the right position like so and in fact, I think I take it back off again just to show you the clip here. So the clip that you saw right at the beginning can only go back in one way. Uh, we can just make that out. It's got a little slot that will only fit in. So it won't go in that way. So there's no worries there either. It just goes in that small groove there. So again, line the splines up. Pop the bonnet or the hood release lever back onto the splines. Like so and then in with your clip and that just pushes in you can feel it click when it goes in check it works all good and there we have it and that is it that's how to replace your chrome grill surround on your skoda kodiak to a black or a black pearl effect as skoda labels it i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please do subscribe to my channel it helps grow my small little channel please do hit the old thumbs up hit the bells icon to be led to any new videos i make and please do hit me up with any comments below. They are always appreciated. And thanks for watching Nose Nose on YouTube. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video.